Greetings hobbyists, this is R. Sands of Vol, and in this video we're going to have a look at effective methods for printing 3D designed bases. So on the screen at the moment is a series of five bases that I designed with a display plinth, uh, effectively just using the area that the bases were going to be cut out of to make something to display them on. Seems like a good use for it. Now if you wanted to create something similar, most of the techniques used here have been covered in my beginner's guide to creating bases. This is a beginner friendly guide to Blender and it goes through all the major techniques that you need here. The only extra one that I've really used is one to create this rubble and that's had some battle damage added to it. I'll put links for how to do all of those things in the description and the cards have been coming up for that in the top right hand corner as I've been talking about it. So this is going to be a bit different to my standard tutorials which have focused purely on Blender up to this point. This is a channel that focuses on Blender for 3D printing and bear in mind that 3D printing at the end is going to be a part of that. I thought this would be a good thing to cover. If this is something you'd like to see more more of or if it's something you don't want to see any of uh, please do put a comment in the comment section otherwise I won't know what you want to see so telling me what you want to see will make the channel more suited to you. Now the idea for this came when I posted some pictures of this display base painted up with some models on it and as well as some questions asking just generally how the bases were designed I got quite a few messages with people asking me how I actually printed the bases specifically how I got the bottoms or the edges of the bases so crisp so it seems something people were having a problem with and to be honest I had quite a lot of problems with this as well when I started out printing I I just couldn't get a good crisp edge. Now I normally use Lightshoe Slicer for my printing, but that's fairly irrelevant to this. It's just being used so I can show you what I do and what has been successful and what's not. So I generally follow the standard things that people suggest doing. I generally rotate my bases somewhere in the region of 45 to 50 degrees. I actually find 46 quite useful for my printer. I generally check then that I've got nothing flat to the printer bed and then add in pretty standard supports. Now at this point to try and make these edges nice and crisp I generally do add some additional supports to the bottom here. For example trying to make sure that there is a mix of ones coming from both angles so for example this way and attempt to make sure that everything is as supported as it possibly can be. And this generally gives quite okay results. I would say of all the things that I've tried, these are generally the worst results that I get, but it is better than not adding in these supports. And the further you go around, the better these will be, but you're going to end up with something that looks a little bit like this. So this is a base that I've printed using this technique. I find that this doesn't work very well as many either medium or small size supports that I've added. And added to this, if you don't put the supports up far enough the sides which I clearly haven't done here you end up with these indent and a lack of a crisp edge. Now it should be noted that I have seen people have quite good results with this technique and it's not to say that it won't work for you but I would suggest that what I'm going to do next is going to give you a much more reliable result. So back to Blender and I'm just going to isolate this base so we can have a look at what my first technique of trying to improve my print quality is. So the most important bit of this and the sort of theory of printing bases or printing anything really is that you put the supports in on areas that are going to potentially be relatively unsupported or are going to have a lot of suction acting on them as the printer bed pulls away from the FEP pulling the resin with it. And therefore if you don't have a lot of supports on this bottom edge what's going to happen is that it's going to pull away and it's going to deform and then when it tries to print the next layer it's not going to print it correct. Now we can attempt to solve this by putting in lots and lots of supports in place here but I think it's sort of missing the point in some ways and that is that if you look at what most bases or most failed prints turn out like, after a little bit of printing, generally the print starts to come out fine. It's just that initial bit where you get those first layers that causes a problem with this. And I came up with the idea of, well, why make the edge of the base the first bit that's getting printed? So if I, for example, take this face here, I just inset it slightly, and it doesn't need to be much, maybe just a millimetre or two. I normally go for about 1.5, just to be on the safe side, and then... If I just select these faces, and bear in mind I'm selecting this to be the bit that's going to be pointing downwards, so this is the first part to be printed, I'm just going to select these faces here, all the way around for this half. I can even go a little bit further if I want to, just to be safe. And then I'm just going to extrude them down. So extruding that by about 0.5 millimeters, and then I'm just going to select the forward facing faces, press E, to extrude them and I'm just going to extrude them out forwards just something like that. I can then bring this into Lychee or whichever other program that you want to use and do my standard supports but this time as I rotate it and change that to whatever I want so 46 
when I start supporting them, all of these supports here are going to not need to be as dense in terms of the number of them, and they should mean that by the time we get up to this bit that's going to be the sharp edge, we should actually end up with a decent quality print because any disruption is going to happen at the lower edge of this. Now, I would advise if you do this, and actually it's done a fairly good job of this here, is that you would put some supports as well where this bit starts just because there you're going to get a lot of potentially extra pull on the FEP. So just something like probably that. And now this should print fine. And when you print it, you should end up with something like this. Now you'll see that the bottom half of this has ripped away slightly uh, as I was taking the supports off. That's because this is just so thin. It's only half a millimeter. And then I can start pulling away at the other bits. And that's going to leave me a slight amount on this back face here that I need to sand down. Now, whatever happens, there's going to be a little bit of cleanup here. But this is going to be a vastly simpler matter of cleaning this up, sanding it down a little bit to make it flush. And it's going to leave a nice clean crisp edge to this so i've just got a cork block that you can buy from any diy store and i'm using a product called abronet it's uh, basically like sandpaper you could just use sandpaper that'd be perfectly fine and uh, the reason i use it is it's reusable uh, you can just wash all the resin off and uh, please do make sure that when you're sanding resin that you've got a dust mask on because uh, it's not good to breathe it in the only thing you've got to be careful of is that you sand it down to an equal thickness so that it will sit flat on the gaming table or surface that you're using. And as you can see, after a little bit of work, that's come away with a nice, clean, crisp edge. So that's the first technique that is quite a good one. It does require a tiny bit of extra work in Blender, but nothing to be really concerned about. So that's how I've been printing bases for a while now until I came across one last thing. And that was to, instead of worrying about all these supports, is to simply print flat on the printer bed, just like this. Now, that makes life a lot easier. I mean, depending on the way you look at it, I can print a lot quicker with this. It's only going to be a short distance to print. Obviously, we can fit slightly less on the printer bed, but not by much unless you're going to go for quite an extreme angle on these prints. And obviously, if you've got something more complex, you might need to add some supports in the side, but this should be fine. And what's great about this is the bottom of the base has to pimp flat because it's on the metal of the printer bed. So this is just vastly quicker in printing time, worrying about support. It's going to work great except for the fact that you have to then try and get this off the printer bed. And inevitably, as you're doing this with a spatula or whatever, you're going to chip it. Now, and that was until I bought one of these. And you can see here that I've got some bases printed on it. And all this is, is a metal bottom with a magnetic sort of sticker bit that you stick to your printer bed. And you can peel this off really easily. And because it's quite thin metal, it will flex. And you can just flex it here to pop off the base. And that means you're going to get a really nice smooth finish. Now, it is worth noting that you are going to have a slight problem. And you can see here that there is a slight ring around the bottom of the base. That is because when you print, you have your burn-in layers and they end up printing a little bit wider because they're just for a longer period of time. Now, this isn't too difficult to sand down. And I think whichever you go for in terms of the last two options, you're going to get a better result than the first. And what you prefer is up to you. I mean, this one has slightly more sanding, but I generally find that the speed of printing really makes up for this because you're printing less layers. I will also add that I've been recently doing some reading and there's some nice resins that are coming on the market which are specifically for 4K and 8K printers. And all they have is, from what I understand, a higher pigment density. And what that means is that the light of the printer isn't going to go through as much and therefore you're going to get less of this slight outlining effect. Now, I haven't had a chance to test that yet. I've actually got some on order and I need to see how that goes but the logic is fairly sound and you know what even if it doesn't work this is my preferred method for printing bases it just gives a really consistent flat bottom to it and it makes it very easy to get these crisp edges so hopefully you found that interesting again as i said at the beginning please do add some comments in the comments section if this is something that you found helpful or if you just want me to stick to showing designs and modeling on blender please do say